Good morning, Americans. This is your favorite alien here on the morning of Friday, February 10th, 2023. Sitting in for Paul Harvey this morning. Stand by for the rest of the story. Well, the rest of the story is Davy Crockett. You Americans, for the most part, have been told in your schools and uh, through your friends, Davy Crockett. Some people might say, he's a bunch of crack. Poor guy. Other people might say, Davy Crockett, he died in the Alamo, so what about him? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And other people might say, really? That's a bunch of hogwash. Well, believe it or not, there's a 98% truth factor in Davy Crockett. But you have to understand Davy Crockett. And the historians don't present him in a good way because they don't understand him. They don't comprehend what Davy Crockett is. Davy Crockett, they try to present as a person. Well, actually, he's a persona. He's a composite. Okay? So this is the story of Davy Crockett. I don't mean David Crockett. I mean Davy Crockett. Was he a frontiersman? Yes and no. Was he a uh, soldier? Yes and no. Was he a... Uh, Politician, yes and no. Was he good at anything? Well, yes. One thing, and no to most things. <laughs> oh, poor Davy. Uh, yeah, he was actually not good at most things, poor guy. But still, and most people who die, people forget about him. Unless, of course... They have a notoriety as the Alamo or places like that. Like Custer. Everybody would forget about him except that he died in a little big horn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that happened to Davy Crockett, too. He was like Custer, and he was forgotten. Poor guy. Nobody knows how many arrows were in poor Davy, but yeah. Mm. Poor guy. So let me explain why I say that Davy Crockett is a persona in a composite. In fact, I'm doing a story for my group here in uh, Grand Villa of the Land, an uh, assisted living place where us old folks uh, live here in Florida, on Sunday at 2 o'clock. And I asked my friends at Volusia County Sheriff Department to do me a composite of what I figure David Crockett is. So one half is Fess Parker, and the other half is John Wayne. And why that? Because those two guys revived the persona of Davy Crockett. Fess Parker did those three programs for Disney in the early 50s, and the mid-50s there. And uh, John Wayne took the part of Davy Crockett in the 1960, the Alamo. Remember that? And by the way, both Fess Parker and John Wayne personified Davy Crockett. And I'll go on to tell you why. The person you call Davy Crockett, David Crockett, was born in a town called Limestone. And according to the, uh, any source that you go to see him, he says, Davy Crockett, born in 18, or 1786 in Limestone, Tennessee. Uh, yeah? He was Tennessean, but, uh, yeah! Tennessee was a state in 1796, not 1786. Yeah! Mistake number one, he wasn't born in Limestone, Tennessee. Okay. So that's one mistake for the historians. Yo! Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So that's when Davy Crockett was born. And of course, you know, he died in March 1836 at the Alamo, age 49. That's a key, 49 years old, okay? And you say, well, that's one of the reasons why I say it's poppycock, because he was 49 years old. He was born in 1786. Trust me, I've heard every, every one of these things. Okay? So let's go back and I say, this is what I say, yes and no. Okay? His father's name was John. John Crockett. Born 1753. Uh... In, uh, well, they put him either in Virginia or Maryland. You know, poor John, uh, you know. John's father, Davy Crockett, born 1729. And in 1729, uh, he was born in the British colony of North Carolina. It had just become North Carolina because the Carolinas had split. Okay. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. the town that he was born no longer exists. It now is part of what today is Fayetteville, North Carolina. There's little known about uh, Mr. Crockett, Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett, Wild Frontier, King of the Wild Frontier. Okay. Remember that? This is the guy, Davy Crockett, with the coonskin cap and the uh, uh, skinned, uh, buckskin uh, jacket and the musket, Daniel Boone style. Remember, Daniel Boone was born in 1734. Yoo-hoo! Davy Crockett was born in 1729. Davy Crockett was born in 1729. Okay? And Davy, like Daniel Boone, decided that he was a frontiersman and nothing else. So he went about trying to find stuff. And he wanted to relocate his family to this new territory that the uh, British had won in the Seven Years' War, or as you Americans call it, the French and Indian War. And they got the Northwest Territories in uh, 1763. And uh, Daniel Boone had the same thing. He, and both of them actually thought in that war, okay? Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett both fought in that war. 1756 uh, to 63. And they were both part of General Burgoyne's disastrous, I mean, not General Burgoyne, but General, uh, what was his name? Hmm. Uh, oh, I forget who he was. But uh, anyway, he was a disaster in 1755. Ooh, boy, he got massacred. And they survived. Okay. And uh, they decided that, hey, this looks like good territory. And this was part of, at the time, would later be called Kentucky. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. So they uh, went over there. Daniel Boone went back to his Virginia roots, uh, 20 years later, he would come back and go and cross the Cumberland Gap and establish Boonesboro, yeah, in about 1775. About the same time, Mr. Davy Crockett decided to go the same way. But the reason why Daniel Boone went to Kentucky is it was a better place to go. Sure, you had some bad guys named the Hurons and the Pawnee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but they weren't as bad as the Cherokee were downtown in uh, North Carolina Territory. Because remember, Kentucky was part of Virginia, and the territory that became Tennessee was originally North Carolina. Uh, yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. So going forward here, here we are in 1776. They establish a a uh, little fort there. Nobody remembers the name, by the way. Uh, and they stake out their little claim there. And, uh, you know, there. And in 1777, uh, oh, John Crockett, who was born in 1753, uh, you know, was uh, 
oh, as uh, over 20 years old, so he went for an errand for his father with supplies over to North Carolina, which left John Crockett and his wife, some of their kids, they had about 10, I don't know how many were left there, but John and his brothers uh, went over there and other people to get some supplies. Uh, and unfortunately for Davy Crockett, the uh, Cherokee uh, decided to attack, and he got clobbered. I mean, him and his wife both died in 1777. So there is your frontiersman, and he died there. A year later, Daniel Boone would fate the same will have the same fate, but he lived. Because Boonesboro was saved by the colonists and him, and the militia of Virginia came there in time and clobbered the Pawnee. Uh, yeah, literally destroyed them, really. Whereas the North Carolina militia at the time, remember, this is during the American Revolution, was busy over on the east side, and they you know, didn't, the British... Well, the British let the Indians do most of the nasty work on the west side. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. So, therefore, Daniel Boone lived to a ripe old age in 1820. And Davy Crockett, the frontiersman, the king of the wild frontier. Well, he kicked a bucket by a bunch of Indian arrows in 1777. And the Northwest Territory later becoming Tennessee. Uh, Crockett and the family came back, sold uh, the uh, property that they had to a, another frontiersman, a Huguenot, because they were Huguenots, uh, and uh, mm, well, they came back to the eastern side of Tennessee and settled in what today is limestone. Okay. Now, in 1786. Uh, John Crockett kept alive the visions of his father, Davy Crockett. And he had a son, and he called him David Crockett, but he called him Davy Crockett. And he saved the Coons Gap from his dad, and he saved the stories that he had about his dad and passed it on to David Crockett. Now, the... Remember, in 1786, it's limestone, but it's not Tennessee. It's the Republic of Franklin. yoo -hoo! And you guys that live in Franklin, Tennessee know about this because at that time, Franklin was going to be a new republic, and they wanted to be admitted into the Union as the state of Franklin. yoo -hoo! Uh, yeah. Well, since it was a loosely based uh Federation, not quite a nation yet as far as the United States was concerned. And this is before the Constitution, people. Uh, you, uh, yeah, okay. So the uh, Articles of Confederation was not adopted to bringing in a new guy. So they just tabled it and tabled it and tabled it. And finally, North Carolina says, I've had enough of you and annexed it. And therefore, Franklin became... North Carolina territory again. Yahoo! <laughs> you get the point, Americans? Okay. So then, uh, the uh, new territory, Limestone is part of North Carolina. In 1796, well, North Carolina cedes the territory. It becomes Tennessee! Uh, uh, yeah. And Crockett, in 1788, becomes, uh, that's John Crockett, by the way, the son of Davy Crockett, and he becomes magistrate in Limestone. And this young guy comes in because he's going to be sworn in as a new lawyer, and he's the magistrate, Crockett is. The new guy's name? Andrew Jackson! <laughs> and he would have a bad influence on David Davy Crockett, because the two never saw eye to eye, and they would come back to haunt them. Okay, <clears throat> they were both Tennesseans. They both loved Tennessee, and that's what you Americans don't understand about David Crockett. Not Davy Crockett, but David Crockett. He was a Tennessean 
to the core. He may have been lousy at everything else, but he was a Tennessean. Okay? So uh, in uh, 1798, uh, John needed help, so he, uh, how would you say, pimped is the word to use, his son, Davy, to another guy to do his work for him. Kind of like uh, King Minus getting uh, Hercules for the Herculean task. Remember that? Yeah, remember. That's what Davy Crockett, I mean, uh, John Crockett did. And Davy, uh, after he completed his things, he came back and the family said, okay, Davy, now you got to get some schooling. Right. Something that David Crockett, as in David Davy Crockett, hated. School! <clears throat> with a passion. So he uh, told the school where to go. His dad got a little inebriated or intoxicated or smashed, whichever one you prefer. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> Davy came home and uh, his dad, in no certain terms, told him about the schooling and David told him to go stick it and left. Came back around 1802. Now, with John Crockett, uh, most people put him that he died in 1802, and uh, other people said 1834. Now, can you imagine 1753 to 1834? That's a long time. But anyway, I'd lean more to 1802 because in his memoirs, David Crockett, as in Davy Crockett, uh, says that he had to come back, and when he came back in 1802, he paid off his dad's debts. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So that, is, that makes me assume that the dad had passed away in 1802. Now, uh, you go up a little bit, uh, 1813, you had uh, the uh, Indians, especially the Cherokee, were still giving uh, Tennesseans a little problem there until 1813 when they got clobbered by Andrew Jackson. Oh, and by the way, uh, Davy Crockett, uh, yeah, it was part of that group. But him and Andrew didn't see eye to eye because he said that Andrew uh, uh, Jackson was a disaster as a leader and he treated people bad, which Andrew Jackson did. Andrew Jackson, his reputation should be like Donald J. Trump. <coughs> yeah, he was bad. And uh, that's something that uh, Davy Crockett, even though the Indians were the Indians, he thought that they had life and they deserved to be looked upon as equal to you. That is something that surprised me about Davy Crockett, okay? Because he was, uh, well, he wasn't exactly a well-mannered guy. Uh, the way that John uh, Wayne portrayed him in 1860 in the movie Alamo, that is the true Davy Crockett. This Davy Crockett. So, in 1834, uh, he finally had it with uh, Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson, like Trump, did what he did, Trump would do to the Republicans who opposed him, and he lost his seat in Congress. And Well, Davey had enough, and he got 22 people and decided to find new pastors, and Tennessee was getting corrupted by Andrew Jackson. So he left Tennessee with his 22 Tennesseans and headed for... Texas, and the rest is the rest of the story that you know, the Alamo, Jim Bowie, Colonel Travis, and all the rest of the good guys, and of course, Santa Anna. Mm -hmm. And now you know Americans that Davy Crockett is actually a composite of three people. The original frontiersman Davy Crockett, 1729 to 1777. John Crockett, his son, 1753 to around 1802, I would say. I, I, I got 98% that he died in 1802. Uh, and Davy Crockett, 1786. Limestone Franklin Federation and not Tennessee. yo uh, mm -hmm, To El Alamo, 1836 in March. Sitting in for Paul Harvey. And now you know the rest of the story. Good day.